a dead cat. So it is is to convey the dead and the life. Right, so this is mine la. I got the mine is the second edition and yeah still got the cat in front but if you notice the back the back cover right the back cover is a dead cat so yeah it's uh, the the quantum mechanics is the whole thing is bullying cats the whole time but uh but like Sean Carroll said in that video right uh we can change it to sleeping cat or a wet cat I guess that's perfectly fine as well so if you like cats I guess that's uh, that's what you will do. Um, okay, so everyone's here already. Let's get started. Uh, we are continuing the story of um, yeah, that is true. That is like uh, <laughs> from from the lecturer's point of view is the is the Schrodinger student, right? You you don't know whether the student is uh, asleep or awake. In a physical class, we can see whether someone is asleep or awake but <laughs> the um, now it's online so it's a bit uh, it's, it's different and we got the Schrodinger situation here so yeah let's get started um, we are so where we pick up where we left off in our previous class so previously we stopped until well we, we were talking about the position representation right so that means we are representing everything in terms of the basis X okay so with this is the original am i recording this is the original schrodinger equation right we have used this to solve a couple of problems already earlier um but to derive in a form that you might have seen before for those who have taken uh, modern physics class uh, what we do is we this is in the representation of the Schrodinger e equation in hilbert space right but if we take the position representation of my state then it becomes a function of x but of course this is a state so under the Hamiltonian the state of the system might change so in general we let it depend on x and t as well and in order to get the Schrodinger equation so we substitute this, this inside we got the Schrodinger equation that looks like this right so it is a partial differential equation uh, um, what is it h squared over 2m uh, d square dx square uh, plus v and like this right so this is a partial differential equation which is not very easy to solve so what we do is uh, we did this just before at the end of the previous class we assume that it is a product of uh, two functions that are single variable right so this is the trick that we use so we substitute this into this and then we manage to split this into two ODEs, which will be should be easier to solve. In fact, one of the ODEs is just a simple one, which we can immediately solve. We got this straight away, right? So uh, then you got this e to the power of i e t over uh, h bar, right? So we got a separation constant e. Okay, so separation constant e. And then the second ODE looks like this. So the second ODE we can't solve yet because it depends on the problem. It depends on the potential, right? We have not said what is the function V yet. V is the potential energy of the system. So we expect for different kinds of potential energy, we will have different, uh, we will have different solutions. So this is our, uh, what we call the time independent Schrodinger equation. So. I'm not sure whether Prof Ong calls it that, but this is what we are calling it here. This is the time independent uh, Schrodinger equation. All right, so for short, uh, I'll, I'll say this is TISE, right? So this is the time dependent part, okay? So the, the final solution will take the form, uh, would, would look like this. So remember, right, actually, the, the reason why we split into this is we have separated into this. So to assemble this back into my position wave function, uh, my function of x and t is this one settled already, right? So quite amazingly, we solve this part of the Schrodinger equation without doing anything. Uh, but this part, we still haven't done, right? So this part will depend on uh, solving this. So this is what we want to do uh, and it will be the main content of uh, this chapter chapter 3 okay 
So yeah, so that's this is the situation where we left off last time. But to continue, right? What I want to continue next is let's discuss E a little bit. So we call E is the separation constant. Okay, so the reason why we had a separation constant when we are doing this calculation, if you recall the previous lecture, it came from a mathematical reason, right? So we just by manipulation, we move things to the left hand side, move all the time dependent functions to the left, all the x dependent function to the right. And then we, we, then we wonder to ourselves, how can a function of t be equal to a function of x? And the only possibility is they are both equals to the same constant and we call e to be a constant. So why we call this e? Because eventually it is, we realize that it is the energy, but at this moment, I haven't convinced you yet, right? So how are we supposed to know? So how do we know uh, the separation constant uh, e is the energy, okay? So, uh, so now this is what I want to show you next. Okay, so in order to do this, uh, I will. I think it will be easier to go back to the bracket form. Of the Schrodinger equation. So that means, uh, let's come to this again, right? So d dt, uh, for any position, and then I got uh h, uh, psi. Okay. So the reason why is this we got this right is going to be the following. So I want to show you that if there's a Hamiltonian here, okay? So we got a Hamiltonian and then Hamiltonian is an operator, it's a Hermitian operator. So naturally what we want to do, it would be great if we were to know what are the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian. Okay, so if we are able to do that, right? If we are able to find the eigenstates of H. So if we can do that, right, then we can we will be able to find the state. So I will call this En, right? And then it will be equal to the eigenvalue and then En. Okay? Because the eigenvalue of Hamiltonian is the energy of the system. Okay? So if we can do that, then yeah, then we can, uh, it will be nice because, um, because right, uh, if I can find the eigenstates, then an arbitrary linear combination, okay? Uh, so that means, uh, that means I take minus i e n t over h bar uh, times n for any coefficient c n is a solution. Of Schrodinger equation, okay. So then you ask, huh? How come suddenly I write this out of nowhere? Uh, it's not. I will have to convince you why this is true. So let's prove this, okay? So let's uh, let me convince you why this is the solution to Schrodinger equation. Basically, left hand side equals to right hand side. Um, maybe if you can, if you can already see ahead, you can understand why. But if not, uh, let's start the calculation from the left hand side. So from the left hand side is i h bar differentiating this function with respect to t. So basically I got i h bar and then differentiating t, right? And then there's a summation. So I got summation n c n differentiating t, I got negative i e n over h bar uh, e minus i e n t over h bar uh, e n over here. Okay. Then, um, then let's see what we can do. Uh, so there's a h bar cancelling with all the h bars in the sum, right? And then there's a negative i times i, so negative one times negative one will become one. Okay, and then what I end up here is, uh, well, it's just basically the summation of mm, e n, and then c n e to the minus i e n uh, t over h bar. Okay, so that is the left hand side of the equation. So let's see what happens to the right hand side. Okay, so the right hand side, what's going on there? So on the right hand side, uh, what was the right hand side of the Schrodinger equation? The right hand side of Schrodinger equation is just the h operating on this, right? So it's just the h 
operating on the state and my state was the summation of C n e minus i e n t over h bar uh, sum of the eigenstates. So this is a summation, right? The h operation is linear, so I can multiply this inside. So n c n e. So all these are constants. Uh, all these are numbers. So numbers, the operator don't care about the numbers, so it will just pass right through. And this thing will happen, right? So what is this? Well, we have started by the fact that if this is an uh, eigenstate of h, that means this is equal to eigenvalue times the state. So we come back to the equation c n uh, e n c n e minus i e n t over h bar e n. So see, uh, left hand side equals to the uh, right hand side. So the Schrodinger equation is solved. Right. So this is a solution to the uh, Schrodinger equation. Right. So this is a solution. If I can find the eigenstate, then anything that is taking the form of this sum is the solution. Right. So that is easier said than done, obviously, because um, the main problem is well, how do I find the eigenstate in the first place? Right, so this is this is kind of like the separation invariable in disguise. So let's figure out what is the position wave function of this. So that means uh, we do this right. So my position wave function is x and t, right? So it is uh, to get the position wave function, we close this with the x bra. So on the right hand side, uh, we close this with the x bra, so I've got c n e minus i e n t over uh, h bar, then we close this uh, e n, right? So that means this is a state, this is an eigenstate, whatever it is, it is an eigenstate. If you close this with x, uh, it will give you a, um, it will give you a, uh, it will give you a position wave function, right? So in other words, this is the position wave function for the nth eigenstate okay so i hope by now you you are familiar with the way i'm doing this so i i i can skip re-emphasizing everything right uh this is a state right it's a state in hilbert space but to write down the position wave function you close it with x remember this okay so in other words we got a sum right of coefficient e i e n t over h bar and then uh, psi n. Okay. So we got this. Uh, so we got this equation now. So now you see something very familiar, right? So this is kind of like what we did when we were separating the variables. See. So this is the phi of t, and then this is the psi of x, right? So that what that is the um, that is kind of. That this is why we justify that the E here is the energy. And here I, I consider all the possible energy, so I got E n everything. Okay? So so the way I write this, right, it, it looks as if I immediately solve the Schrodinger equation, but have I really solved? Well, not really, because how do I know what is this in the first place? That will be the challenge of uh, the chapter three. Right? So how do we find this function? Okay. So now, uh, now to figure out what is the the what are actually the eigenstates, the um, actual eigenstates of H, right? So um, here we we are looking at the position representation. means that my position eigenstates is um, well let's start with this right so I got the eigenstate h n e n and then I got e n uh, e n right so I want to find the position representation so we do our trick that we always do for no reason I multiply the identity in between okay 
so for no reason I multiply the identity so what this means is uh, this is equals to h integral dx the cat bra of position uh, en right and same story here so this is integral dx en the cat bra of position so that's give me the psi n of position over here right and then uh, yeah so let's write this out so this is uh, dx and then this is psi n it is a function of x right this is expressed in terms of n basis uh, x basis and then I got the x over here and then I got the Hamiltonian acting on this so remember in the position representation my Hamiltonian becomes what Hamiltonian is kinetic energy plus potential am I right and the kinetic energy operator was uh, this thing right um, hey, hang on just p square plus a v operator x acting on this and then when you acted on this uh, it becomes uh, h bar square over 2m uh, p is h over i derivative and then you p square so you got h bar square uh, and then i times i gives you a negative number here and then i got the second derivative psi over x square and then the position is just yeah position times psi and then x right so this is the x uh, e n psi n x uh, x so um, the integral so this is for arbitrary like cases of integrals so uh, the integrand should require to be the same so this is we recover the uh, time independent uh, Schrodinger equation right for the nth uh, eigenstate okay so this is the time independent Schrodinger equation again okay so I have shown you two ways to derive the uh, time independent uh, Schrodinger equation the first way is kind of like the partial differential equation way right it is kind of like probably what uh, Lim Tao-Chen would do right if talking about differential you just get the differential equation and then normally what you do is you try separation of variables so now I'm showing you again, but we understand the meaning of the separation constant. So we start from the bra cat. We remember what are the meaning of the eigenstates. And after doing this manipulation, we realize that this is an equation to determine the eigenstate of Hamiltonian. So this is kind of um, a big deal. So I should probably write this explicitly. All right. So we have shown that. Uh, the time independent Schrodinger equation is an equation to determine the eigenstates of ha the Hamiltonian in well specifically in the, as a function of x so we are doing it in the position representation okay so uh, this wave function as a function of x is a, a position representation of a uh, eigenstate of uh, h. And again, re-emphasize this. Uh, whatever this is, right? This is for the nth uh, eigenstate. But for any n, whatever n1, n2, n3, uh, if you operate the Hamiltonian, you will get the eigenvalue for the particular state. And then the, the same state will remain okay so yeah any question is that clear okay so this was uh, page one page two page two page three And it's too dark. Let me. Okay. Oh, cat pictures. Oh, so this is Wei Chen's cat, is it?
uh, oh, uh, h bar, h bar. Yeah, so here in, in this course, everything is h bar. We, we never use the cross out this. Oh, no. Oh, the, oh okay, okay. Let me go to here. I, I cross it out. Yeah, it's not supposed to be there. This is this is one, right? The h bar come in later. Remember, the reason why is because where where's my red pen? Right. Uh, don't forget this. P is h bar over i d d x. So p square naturally is going to be h bar square second derivative. Okay. So this is what's happening here. So when you operate this on the function, it becomes a de derivative with respect to x. Okay. So that's the momentum uh, operator. Okay. Yeah. And so now, yeah, makes sense, right? Okay. Okay. Now, let's one last thing before I start solving uh, potential. Let's talk about superposition a little bit. I did not. I have not spent too much time talking about this, right? So I better discuss this now. I only cover this a little bit during the introduction in chapter one. And then I just like went by very fast. But uh, well, the video, uh, Sean Carroll um, mentioned this a little bit already, like the cat being half asleep or half awake and including you guys, right? But what does that mean? Uh, so in the introduction, I shall to recap what I say in the introduction, right? Is the physical meaning, the intuition behind this, right? A quantum state before you observe it, you don't know what state it is doing, right? Whether the cat is dead or alive or asleep or awake, you don't know until you observe it, right? That's what you meant by the camera thing. So yeah, so you you guys understand. Uh, but how do I express this in the language of my bra cat? So why why do these statements hold? So where does this statement come from? Right before you observe, it's in superposition. But what do you open? Where does it come from? It's because we look at the Schrödinger equation. It is a lin and uh, it's is because of the following. So if I have two states psi one, uh, if these are solutions uh, to the Schrödinger equation, okay, uh, then. So is any linear combination psi is equals to constant one times psi one plus constant two plus psi two. It is also a solution. So this is why the superposition uh, holds. So kind the reason why I went by this a little bit fast is because um, for the physics, right? I think I went through this two or three times already. In mechanics, we had superposition of waves, and then I show you the the proof there. Right, and then in electromagnetism also, we have another superposition, but for electric fields and magnetic fields, and then I show you the proof there also. So now we are doing it here, right? So for um for for the math who didn't uh, take any courses with me, well here is the proof. Okay, so it's very simple. It just means that if I know these two are solutions, uh, that means. They satisfy the Schrodinger equation. So I h bar d d t uh, psi one is Hamiltonian times psi one, and also I h bar d d t uh, psi two, right? So if I plug this in, I will get equals to the Hamiltonian of uh, psi two. Okay. So if these are solutions, so that means this is true, right? So let's say this I consider a new solution now. So let's call this solution phi. So it's some linear combination of my two existing solutions, okay? So I got one solution, I got another solution. If I sum them up, also a solution. Does this satisfy the Schrodinger equation? Let's check left hand side, right? So the left hand side is i h bar d d t uh, of psi. So well, what we have here is just uh, c one i h bar d d t psi one, right? Plus c two i h bar d d t psi two. But we know that these are solutions, so this is going to be equal to this, and this is equal to that. Okay, so that means I got uh, c1 uh, h psi 1 plus c2 h psi 2, and I can factorize the h, so this is c1 psi 1, this is c2 psi 2, 
and C1 sin 1, C2 sin 2 is actually the phi again. So that means, yeah, this is equal to Hamiltonian acting on uh, phi. So left-hand side equals to right-hand side. The Schrodinger equation is solved. Okay? So, yeah. So as you can see, you know, especially if you take taker mechanics and electromagnetism, uh, it's kind of interesting to see that the same concept has so many meanings in different areas. Right? So in electromagnetism, the superposition is because when you shine light across each other, they'll just pass right through each other. The light will just pass right through each other. So that is the meaning when we're doing EM. Uh, in quantum mechanics, is the cat dead or alive, uh, awake or asleep? Because now here is representing a quantum state, right? So the cat is dead here. So if I have a, uh, if I have a situation where the cat is dead, uh, it is a situation, right? It is a system that definitely can happen, so it satisfies the Schrodinger equation. But another scenario is the cat is alive. Okay? So alive definitely can happen. It is a real system, a, a real physical phenomena. It will satisfy the Schrodinger equation. But if we really follow the logical rules of quantum mechanics, uh, I can do this. That means I have a state that is a superposition of dead and alive and a superposition of dead and life will also obey the Schrodinger equation. That means it is a situation that can happen. Okay, So that means physical system, quantum systems can exist in superpositions of uh, things that seem to be unrelated to each other or very far from each other, dead or alive. Okay, So that is the meaning of the or or uh, or sleep or awake uh, right if you prefer let's follow Sean Carroll so yeah <laughs> Sean Carroll also has a cat so I think that is why he likes cats so he don't want to kill cats sleep or awake okay so this is for the bra cat um, but let me so let's write the same situation in position representation right so in in position representation right uh, well just now was uh, my phi right uh, well uh, phi is equal to c1 solution 1 plus c2 times uh, solution 2 Right, so in position representation, uh, I will close this with the bra of x. So that means I got c1 x uh, psi 1 plus c2 uh, x psi 2. So that means this will just give me my function, right, x and t. Uh, this is my position representation of this solution. So I'll just get some function of x and maybe it depends on t. This is c1. And then the same story happens here. So psi, so this is psi one, this is psi two, uh, x and uh, t, right? So this is the superposition principle in position representation. Five one two is uh wait is everything okay uh, uh did I disconnect again like mo like what happened on Monday because never mind I think it should be fine uh so okay let me answer the question of wait uh, let me open the Teams app to see what's happening uh if you can still hear me uh. Okay, so everything is fine. Uh, phi one two is basis no. Uh, this is any state, right? So here is any state. That solves. Uh, Schrodinger equation. Okay.
So any state that uh, solves the Schrodinger equation are not yet the basis, right? So it could be anything as long as you solve the Schrodinger equation because uh, remember what we learned about ammonia maser, right? We got state pointing up, state down. These are two states. And then we solve the Schrodinger equation there. But they are not the basis, right? The eigenstates of the Hamiltonian is the Roman 1 and Roman 2, right? So it, it's a different set. But any two solutions, you sum them up, you got this uh, solution. But uh, speaking of basis, right? Um, this is general case, any situation, but for the special case, uh, right, special case where, uh, where psi 1 is equal to e minus i e 1 t over h bar psi 1 x, right, and psi 2 e minus i e 2 t over h bar psi 2 x, okay. So these are the eigenstates of H, right? Remember the way we did this, I have shown you that these two are uh, eigenstates of H. Right? In particular, X E N is equals to psi N X. Uh, in this case, N is 1 and 2. Right? Then my superposition of my solution is uh, well, my combined solution is xt uh, and then it's just c1 times this thing so it's coefficient 1 minus i e 1 t over h bar uh, eigenstate 1 and then plus c2 e minus i e 2 t over h bar eigenstate 2 okay make sense so i i say 1 and 2 but Obviously, you can do, you can plus C3, eigenstate 3, eigenstate 4, eigenstate 5. You can plus as many as you want, depending on how many eigenstate does H have. Okay, sometimes H have from 1 and 2 in ammonia maser, only 2, uh, or until infinity. Okay, so let me write this case. Yeah, generally, write uh, XT is a summation. Um, Let's do I start from zero to one? Uh start from one to infinity. Right. So C N E I E N T over H bar uh psi N X. Okay. And to re to re emphasize again, this is the nth eigenstate of H. Right, and such that psi n is uh, x e n, and this is the nth eigenvalue. Right, when if you were to do this, okay. So, any question? Is your brain still disconnected? Uh, yeah, this is psi 1 and 2, not 5, yeah. Okay. So that is 5, yeah. Uh, the other is the psi. Yeah, agree. <laughs> In the EM lecture notes, I got give you the translation, right? The Greek letter and the spelling. So, yeah, the psi and phi. I didn't put it here because I thought you you know already. But yeah, I will show it to you again next time. Uh, so if everyone is okay with this. I hope it's not going too fast. Uh, yeah, whether it's psi or phi, you know what I'm talking about, right? So, so no problem there. Um, let me check. Am I still recording? Yes. And yes.
okay what's going on there okay I uh, I don't know <laughs> but let's so I think I think you will like what I'm going to do next because it is something you may have seen before elsewhere um, modern physics or high school uh, which is the one dimensional well let's this is the main uh, overall section Okay, um, and what I'm going to do next is the infinite potential well. Okay, so if you have done this before, I think you can relax, right? Uh, if you even for those who have not seen this before, don't also don't worry. I'm going to do it here. Uh, so this is the problem we're talking about a particle in the box. Okay, so this um, sometimes some books will call it infinite square well, sometimes we'll call it a particle in, in a box. Okay, so remember what we are doing. What we are doing, right? We have separated our Schrodinger equation. Okay, so our scenario is okay, we have figured out how to write down the Schrodinger equation is i e t over h bar times uh, psi of x, right? So this is my position wave function. But to, to determine this, right? To determine this, I need to solve this Schrodinger equation. So d2 squared psi dx squared plus v psi equals to e psi. So if I can solve this, I can get this. And this is the uh, potential energy function. Okay, so what is happening here is that, okay, uh, this is not yet well this is uh, supposed to be almost a solution we just need to figure out what is this and how do we get this these are eigenstates of the Hamiltonian and to to determine this I need to solve this equation how can I solve this equation I need to know what is the potential energy function okay so the potential energy function depends on the situation so in this question uh, in this chapter in this part we will we will consider a various situation for various v, okay. So for various v and in this situation, the particle in the box, the function v is given as follows. So the v of x is defined as uh, it is zero in the region between x zero to a, uh, but it is infinity for all other places. Okay. So in terms of Newtonian mechanics, right, you just have a function that is zero from zero to a, and then infinity and everywhere else. So in Newtonian mechanics and also here, an infinite potential energy means you cannot access this region, right? So if I were to plot the graph of this function, okay, it's a function of x. So from zero to a, then my potential energy is uh, zero from here to here and then go to infinity from here to here so uh, this part is uh, inaccessible cannot access right so this is uh, V okay so generally speaking uh, for higher um, uh, generally speaking right uh, higher V uh, difficult to access lower v easier right uh, v infinity impossible so we will come uh, we will come to this uh, we will make use of this uh, information in order to get answers to our Schrodinger equation Uh, yeah, tunneling is coming soon. What's GG? So, yeah, flashback, right? So we are, we are basically solving the same thing. Okay. Um, remember, this is, we are talking, for those who have not, yeah, for those who have not, 
um, must not forget you guys as well. Uh, we are talking about particle of mass m, right? So particle of mass m, and then infinite potential energy here, zero potential energy here. So what we expect is that a particle of mass m should be somewhere bouncing back and forth between zero to a. So the particle can exist here, but it cannot exist here and it cannot exist here because in order to exist here, you need infinite energy, right? So cannot. But let's try to uh, solve this using Schrodinger equation. So in uh, the way I will solve this, right? I want to organize this as tidy as possible. So I will call this uh, region one, and this is region two. Uh, no, region three. This is region two. Okay. So yeah. So let's call it this. And then, um, and then let's solve. Right. So, uh, region one and three is very simple because in region one and three, uh, the potential energy is infinity, right? So potential energy is infinity. So that means the particle cannot exist there. Um, particle has zero probability to be found there which is to say that uh, the my wave function is zero in these regions okay so the wave function is zero in these regions right so that means my wave function uh, is expected to look like this. So it's zero in region one. In region one is x zero, uh, and it's zero in uh, region three. But that means x greater than a, right? So now we want to figure out what is uh, this function here. Okay. So let's try to figure out this. So in region two, uh, v is zero. So when v is zero, the time independent Schrodinger equation is well, is h bar square over two m, uh, second derivative, right, and then plus v zero and is equals to e times psi. And just a reminder that this equation is for region two, so that means my domain of x is you just need to focus on zero to a only. Okay, so my domain of x is from zero to a. And yeah, it is a differential equation. So let's try to solve this. Okay. Um, okay, so you guys talking about 3D already. We won't even do that yet uh, until much later. But let's focus on this first. Uh, over here, we got a second derivative. So just rearrange. So I got uh, 2me over uh, h bar square uh, psi, right? And this is a second order ODE with the general solution so uh, we can easily solve this right um, both physics and math students have already taken the Taoshan's math uh, ODE course uh, the solution is going to be a cos kx plus another constant sine kx right and how do you get the k k is the square root of whatever this is so k is square root of 2me over h bar am i right and uh, and again to remind us so as not to forget the this solution th is only between zero to the a okay uh this function doesn't go on forever because after this is going to be zero okay so yeah so that means um so that means this is in region two so this is in region two so let me update my solution. So the way I do is, yeah, I write this form and then let's update as we go along. So updating our solution, I have convinced you that whenever my potential is infinity, my wave function is zero, and in this region two, the wave the potential is zero. So the solution is a cos kx plus b sine kx uh, between zero to x to a, right? Uh, let's let this be equal here. And this is zero for x greater than zero. Okay, so we have uh, we have figured this out already, but um, we have a few unknowns here, 
right? So what are the unknowns? So let's keep track of what is happening. X is the position, is the variable. The A is unknown, B is an unknown constant. There's a K. K depends on 2ME over H bar, and we actually don't know what are the values of E, right? M is fixed, is some mass of the particle. If it's electron, we can Google what is the mass of electron, right? If it's proton, we can Google, yeah, we know, basically we know. H bar is a number that we know also. So we have three unknowns, okay? So uh, in order to determine, uh, to determine the constants, the constants, we shall use the assumptions. Okay, so uh, the first assumption is the wave function is continuous. Okay, so that will help us fix the constant here and also the derivative. Uh, but for derivative, right, it is not, we don't require it to be always continuous. Uh, the function itself is continuous, but Maybe sometimes there are sharp corners. I think that's fine, right? So as long as the probability is a continuous function is fine, it maybe it has sharp corners also shouldn't be a problem. So uh, it's continuous except at the places where the potential energy is infinite. Okay, so these are some reasonable assumptions that will help us determine the wave function and once you know the wave function we can these are the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian and also at the same time we can get the probability distribution for that eigenstate okay so yeah so that is uh, what we want to uh, do oh proton yes not photon I, I talk too fast Pro, proton not photon Okay. So, uh, so let's try to uh, demand this to be continuous. So, if it's continuous, right? Um, at x equals to zero. So, if it's x equals to zero, that means um, remember your calculus one. What does continuous means? That means if I approach the limit zero from the left, is equal to approaching it from the right. Okay. So in this case, um, well, in this case, uh, is should I um, yeah? Let's draw a picture. Uh, I should remember. I should remind myself not to be too abstract all the time, right? So yeah, good. Always good to draw pictures. So what is happening here is uh, I have found my wave functions, right? So this is x equals to zero over here, and then uh, this is x equals to a over here, right? So I know that my psi is zero here, and then this is a cos kx plus b uh, sine kx over here, and then psi is zero again here, right? So if I want to be continuous, right? So a continuous that means um, uh, when x is equal to zero these two functions must join together so that 0 is equal to a cos 0 plus b sin 0. Am I right? Okay, so this equation will just tell me, uh, this part will tell me continuity. Okay, so this part is just uh, a plus 0 or in other words a is equal to 0. Okay, so I have found a is equal to 0, so this term is 0. Okay, and then also on this side, uh, so I got a equals to zero. How about continuity at x equals to a, right? So that means I'm over here now. So now I know a is equal to zero, and then uh, b sine over here. So if I take the limit, uh, it will just equal to sine ka, and I must join smoothly to, not smoothly, but I must join to zero, okay? So I got this equation over here, right? So how do I satisfy this equation? Uh, you might be tempted to say b is zero, 
but if I say B0 and then A0, I get nothing. So it's totally like everything gone. So you don't want to say B0. So in order to make this uh, non-trivial, I want to say that my sine Ka is equal to 0. So how do I make the sine Ka equal to 0? Uh, k times a is equal to integer times pi, then it will be 0, right? Right, so let's call this integer n pi. Okay, so in other words, uh, my k is equal to uh, n pi over a. Okay, so that was, uh, so we have, we have fixed uh, a0, and we have determined this k must be equal to this in order for this to be satisfied. So that fixed k, but what was k? Remember k was uh, given by this formula. So k is actually uh, 2me square root over uh, h bar. So this that means this equation can tell me what is the energy. So let's square both sides. So I got 2me over h bar square is equal to pi square n square over a square. So finally, I got a formula for energy now which is pi square n square h bar square over 2m a square, right? So I have found the energy levels of the uh, particle in, a, in the infinite well. So th this is, we have found the, en the allowed energy levels, right? It's an energy level because n must be integer. So e can, cannot take any arbitrary values, it must take you must follow the integer so when n is 1 you plug this in you get one level n2 and so on right so we found the energy levels of uh, the particle in an infinite well okay so we have found the uh, yeah we have found the energy levels okay so are we finished well not yet because we have three unknowns we have found two uh, what's my solution so far okay so my solution my wave function is right it is zero here whenever on the left side of the well uh, between zero to a it is well this term is gone is b sine kx and i have found the k so it is b sine kx k is n pi over a so n pi x over a and zero again so this is x to the left uh, this is between zero uh, to a and then this is x greater than uh, a actually the, as long as it's continuous it doesn't matter whether it's inequality or, e uh, or equal equal right but yeah you know what i mean so uh, there's still a, a constant b so we can um, we will well we will need to determine the constant b but for now we do have a solution already at least the full range so we uh, we we assemble the time dependent solution right we as uh, my full solution is xt is equals to is equals to uh, e minus i e t over h bar times this wave function so um, times this wave function so psi x so in other words this is uh, 0 and then this is minus i e t over h bar uh, b sine n pi x over a what time are we now and then this is 0, right? So this is x less than 0, 0 to x to a, and then this is x greater than a. So this is my uh, full time dependent solution, okay? So we don't know what this b is b yet, but uh, well, I guess now should be a good time to stop. Uh, we should probably take a 10 minutes break. So let's rest for 10 minutes, and uh, when we come back, uh, we, sh we will determine the constant b, okay? Um, if you remember, for those of you who remember your prof on class, you can spoil the answer. What is B? What's the answer for B? In any case, yes, uh, B for break. Uh, over here, no. Uh, N, can, uh, N cannot be 0 because 
if n is zero, right, then sine zero is zero, you still get everything zero, so it's also nothing. Uh, n must be one. So uh, to be precise, n is one, two, three, dot, dot, dot. Yeah. Okay, so break time. Uh, 10 minutes break, so we come back at 5.06. Okay. And uh, during the break, I will show you something about quantum dots. So let me, well, I should stop the recording first. I think for us, seems like uh, there's nothing to worry about, right? <laughs> uh, based on what you guys mentioned yourself, you find theoretical mechanics seems to be harder than quantum mechanics. Um, quantum mechanics is, yeah, like we, uh, we have been talking about this all this time. A lot of new m m brain bending concepts. We just need to wrap our heads around that. But by the time the exam comes, we will have wrapped around our heads around it already, right? Just to know how to use the bra cat and all that stuff, which we are doing now, right? We've been practicing so many things all the time. So, uh, I started recording, yes? Yes. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, there is a uh, fogging going on outside outside the house right now and uh, it's very noisy the mosquito fogging thing um, so that picture the close look no yeah I don't think we can describe the superposition here uh, it can maybe you can use it to describe something like this uh, but no you cannot we cannot say superposition of spin so in general right superposition is something that we cannot visualize right it's almost impossible um just take the cat the dead or alive like what do you draw like you draw the two picture and then on top of each other it's also not that true right so that's why that's why that is also why quantum mechanics is an abstract and also a problem in in a philosophical sense is that what is the reality and things like that it is uh, it is something that we cannot imagine because what we can imagine, right, it is interesting to think about this. What we can imagine is the eigenstates, right, dead, alive, spin up, spin down. It is, those are the things that we can draw and we can visualize in our minds. The, the arbitrary state, the arbitrary superposition is something we, that we cannot draw, right? We can imagine that it is something that we put in Hilbert space. So this is why we spend all the time discussing what is a Hilbert space, what is the dimension, the operator is the eigenvalue. So everything happens there. But what we can extract from our experiment and from our everyday life is only the eigenstate. Okay. So you know if you want to make it sound more interesting, you can say that there's some deeper reality or deeper universe that is happening in the Hilbert space, but we can't see it right as humans so we can't see it with our eyes and things like that um but maybe a some other species of aliens can do it but we can't definitely we can't so what we can see and imagine are only eigenstates okay so that is the that is that is um that is why we learn math right it kind of expands the scopes of what we can imagine uh, if we can write down the equation and things like that we can do more things so this is why the hilbert space bracket representations are very cool one of the reasons so back to um, uh, solving our infinite square well we still haven't determined the constant b right so to determine b uh, well we use the normalization condition okay so remember what was my normalization condition uh, the inner product with itself is 1 Okay, but this just means that um, in the position representation, uh, it just means that my uh, 
the this integral must be equal to one. Okay, so this one I want to go a bit slowly. Um, just to make sure no one has this misconception. Remember what is the absolute value square? Absolute value square doesn't mean just square. Okay, it means complex conjugate uh, times the original and then integrate. Okay, so what's the complex conjugate? Well, first of all, my function, even though I integrate from infinity to infinity, right? Uh, but most of the time, my function is zero. Right, so that means it is zero except between zero to a, okay, between zero to a, and then this function. So let's write down explicitly what is this function complex conjugate. So this function complex conjugate is e. Uh, conjugate becomes positive i, and then there is a b bar, okay. Uh, b can be b can be any constant, so. I allow the possibility for it to be complex, doesn't matter. Uh, everything in the sine function are real numbers, so n pi x over a. And then this thing, so the original function is just e minus i e t over h bar uh, b sine uh, n pi x over a. Okay, so this time I put the dx at the back, so hope you guys are happy. But what I have here is b constant b bar times b is just absolute value of b right they are constant so i take it out of the integral and then this is why we do conjugate right it's not just square it's conjugate means this e will cancel with this e right so what we have here is just integral of a sine square and integrate this with respect to dx okay so I could have gotten the same calculation if I were if I if I just to if I just do this lah. Uh, just the position wave function themselves. Right, I could have gotten this. Okay, but um, rem but I define my normalization using the full wave function, so I should do everything properly, right? But I believe in modern physics, you know, they start with this. But there is some slight distinction. The reason why this is equal to this is because the time dependent part cancel each other. Ah, uh, yeah. So thanks for answering. Yeah. So the other reason, is, the the, um, yeah, is because it's already zero. Right? Anything that is not zero to a is already gone, already zero. Okay. So now let's integrate this function, which should be pretty easy now, right? Uh, so let's, yeah, this is a basic calculus problem. Uh, what do you do if you're asked to integrate a sine square? We use a trigo identity, right? So sine square is half minus half cos and then twice of whatever is inside here. Okay, and then when you integrate, what you get is, well, uh, in the front is half x, and then over here is a over 4 pi n sine. Um, even if I make a mistake here, it doesn't matter because this is going to be 0 anyway. Okay, so if you put in the limit, this term will be 0. And this term will be uh, a over 2. Right? So remember, b is a constant which can be complex, but we are free to choose. All we need is just to make, this show, make sure this equals to 1. So let's choose... Uh, b to be uh, equal to the square root of 2 over a right so then then this then normalization is satisfied okay I could have choose b is i times this it's still true but why not just put this is enough okay so finally we got the uh, full solution Right, so we got everything already. Right, so let us collect all our information in our uh, full solution. Okay, so my full solution is well, um, I got psi uh, x t. Uh, in fact, I have found all the n solutions. So it is the time dependent part times uh, psi of n, right? So what is en, what is psi n? So this is the general solution, okay? But 
usually yeah we need to determine what are psi and what is e so we have found the psi of n so the psi of n was uh, it is zero here and then it is b so it's square root 2 over a uh, sine of n pi x over a and then zero again right so it is only interesting between zero to a and it is zero for here and it is zero for here and then there is a en right so there's a en here so the en was given by uh, I don't remember pi or uh, this thing so it's pi square n square h bar square over 2m a square okay so just now uh, yeah I already wrote that we have found the solution of this but to emphasize that these are discrete energy levels okay so if you plot the energy of the system right so the possible energy of the system right so it's uh it's like you get e1 so e1 is uh, some number here which is uh, pi square h bar square over 2 ma and then the second energy level is uh, n equals to 2 so it's 4 pi square h bar square over 2 ma and then yeah and so on so forth so the energy levels are discrete right, so the energy levels are discrete and it depends on the integer n and the wave functions the possible wave functions these are eigenstates as well and I can show you what the shape looks like so I guess there's enough space so let's draw it here um, so let's sketch the wave function so what we have here is from 0 to a right uh, let's start with n equals to 1 so n cannot be 0 uh, Thierry was asking right so n cannot be 0 because when n is 0 nothing but when n is 1 uh, it, my wave function is just like this right so this is just psi but what's the probability distribution so the probability distribution is you need the modulus square right so the modulus square also from 0 to a so if you square this you get this right so this is the square of the sine function so at the lowest energy level the energy is this much uh, at the lowest energy level the particle has the highest chance to be found near the middle okay then how about n equals to 2 so if I draw n equals to 2 uh, if n equals to 2 then until a you get something like this right but the probability distribution uh, psi 2 square you get square of this so you get something like this right so at the next energy level it, this is interesting at the next energy level exactly in the middle the particle is not going to be there right so this is the n equals to 2 then so you see the pattern like if you go to n equals to 3 until a so you get uh, something like this right and then the probability distribution is uh, three times okay okay so at higher n the probability becomes more and more okay so these are the energy levels of the uh, hydrogen and uh, the particle in a box why do I say hydrogen we will do hydrogen but that's much harder and that's much later okay okay uh, what page is what number is this so does anyone have any question okay so to reiterate right um, we have found the eigenstates right so we have found uh, psi n x and these right remember what I was telling you earlier these are actually the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian of h and the Hamiltonian of h in this particular problem so in this particular problem my Hamiltonian is given by this potential energy function right is this so yeah uh, so is is p squared plus this potential so for this 
particular potential, we have found the uh, eigenstates already. But in any case, uh, we continue to do what we have been doing so far, right? Um, remember, we have found eigenstates. So these are eigenstates, and by right, these are eigenstates of a Hermitian operator. They should be also um, also normal. Okay. So let's check the also normality. Okay. So let this is yeah. This is something we should worth checking. Okay. So let's take. A psi n and then inner product with another uh, psi n. So, so let's take uh, e m, right? And then I multiply inner product with another e m. Okay. So, if these are eigenstates of a Hermitian operator, that means this uh, should be equal to what? Uh, do you remember? Okay, so I guess you can already predict it's a delta. But do you know what kind of delta? Is it a chronicle delta or a Dirac delta? Well, it is a chronicle delta, right? Because the the energy levels are discrete, so the bases are discrete. Okay, even though they are infinite. Okay, so it's like some new twist to the problem, but it's the same thing. It's related to everything we have been doing so far. So it's nothing new. Okay, uh, so let's check are they equal. So let's find out, right? So again, as before, let us do our common trick. Uh, let me put uh, identity operator for no reason here, uh, because uh, identity operator is equal to the cat bra of x. So this is e m, uh, x cat bra x e n okay so then now this is as what we have found right we have found this already the general n and this is for some other m and it is the complex conjugate right so another thing to remember i believe is a common mistake this is the other way around so it's the other way around means it's a complex conjugate okay so let us write the full formula for this Okay, so uh, even though I'm integrating from infinity to infinity, uh, but like, was it Wei Cheng who asked? Yeah, Wei Cheng, right? Uh, who? Yeah, so even though it's, yes, from infinity to infinity, the boundary, uh, I mean, uh, is zero most of the time except from zero to A. And when it's zero to A, my function is what? So this function is... Uh, 2 over a and then sine of this is using m pi x over a and then this part is 2 over a uh, sine of n pi x over a okay so these are constants uh, so I can move it aside so this is 2 over a and then I'm integrating from 0 to a uh, sine of m pi x over a s sine of n pi x over a integrate this with respect to dx okay so yeah um, I'm not gonna show this to you because this is like something would be a calculus one thing so um, in calculus one you would have learned how to perform this integration am I right um, probably integration by parts or some other trick but this is going to be equals uh, well when m and n are the same integer we have done this calculation already is equals to a over 2 uh, if m is equal to n but you can try this for yourself if these two integer are not the same right so this is going to be equal to 0 Okay, so that means uh, a over 2 here, 2 over a here, what we have found is my inner product em inner product with en is equals to 1 if m is equals to n is 0 if uh, not equals, right? In other words, this is equals to delta mn. Okay. 
So yes, they are also normal. Uh, we have verified that eigenstates, uh, all the EN eigenstates are also normal to each other. Okay, so if they're also normal, they form a complete basis and you can eventually, you know, once you check this, you can do stuff like this. So you can do things like uh, the cat bra identity and all, all kinds of things. Right. So that is if you need to do, la, but um, we don't need for now. We don't need for now, but uh, we do need to check that they are also normal. Okay, so uh, what else do we need to do? Well, we have any questions first? Yeah, so I, I hope everyone is following so far. Uh, we have found the, again, we have found the eigenstates. And uh, as what we have been doing so far, every time we found an eigenstate of a Hermitian operator, we want to use this as a basis, right? So since there are eigenstates, we can use this as a basis. Uh, they can be used as a basis, right? So that means uh, any state can be constructed uh, using this basis. In other words, any state psi, right? Any state psi uh, can be taken C1 times E1 plus C2 times E2 plus uh, dot dot dot. So in general, it is the summation from uh, any number of Cn and then En. Okay? So any basis, uh, I mean, once you have the basis, right? Um, what is the purpose of a basis? Remember from the beginning, basis is the building blocks of our Hilbert space. So that means any vector can be represented by taking all the bases, multiply them, and you sum them up, you can build the vector, whatever vector you want. So if you choose any coefficient, you should be able to build any uh, state that you want. Okay. Um, so now let me connect this to a uh, function. And, that, and what I'm going to do is, well, I'm talking about Hilbert space as a vector space, right? And now I want to show you that functions behave like vectors in this sense. So what happens if I take the position representation of this equation? Okay, so if I take the position representation of this equation, that means uh, what I have here is uh, x e1, x e2, and so on and so forth, right? So this is the summation C n x e n. So this is the general sum. And what is this? This is a position wave function psi 1. This is wave function psi 2. Uh, sum everything. And then this is the summation from 1 to infinity. C n arbitrary sum of a wave function. Right? So that will give me some other arbitrary state. So uh, what we have found here is that... Um, any function can be constructed as a linear combination of the basis function. Okay, so we got uh, any function um, so there are some caveats and conditions so I, I will discuss this later. So what I have found here is that any function psi can be uh, constructed or expressed as a linear combination of what? Of any arbitrary psi n and we have found them to be 2 over a square root sine uh, n pi x over a and n can be 1, 2, 3 until infinity. Okay, so this is what we um, in math, uh, in more towards the math side, it, um, over there they call it the basis functions. So why, why now? But now we understand why we call it the basis function because these are the position representation of the basis uh, states, which are eigenstates of 
my uh, Hamiltonian. Okay, so any function can be expressed as a linear combination of this, and then of course we got the caveat here, right? So um, what we are talking about is uh, we are referring to the function in the domain uh, from zero to x to a, and of course uh, must must be normalized. or uh, integrable or well not not normalized uh, but as long as it is not infinity right from 0 to a okay so that means you don't have a uh, uh, ln x or something so you can't do that for ln for logarithm x but for any function that is satisfy this condition it can be expand as uh, this so this uh, so that means this is this we start to see the initial idea of the Fourier series have you heard I have told you um, have I told you about Fourier series before or have you seen Fourier series in other places before um, if you have not this is where we start to see the basic idea of Fourier series coming into place and the reason why is because um, uh, well, let me write this first. We see that uh, the set of functions uh, that obey or that satisfy uh, this caveat um, behaves like a vector space. Okay, and it is an infinite dimensional vector space. Because the basis is E1, uh, E2, right? Uh, En, N can go to infinity. Because uh, we have found that our energy, our En can go to infinity. Okay. So you have, yeah, so, ah, uh, yes, now I remember, uh, you, you do Fourier series in calculus too, right? So here we, we kind of derive, we, ha we kind of derive the Fourier, so what was your Fourier series? So our function is a linear combination of this, right? So that means um, any arbitrary function is the uh, summation of some coefficient, right? So some coefficient and then uh, sine of n pi x over a, right? So this time now we know that this is uh, cn2 over a square root, but constant times constant is still a constant. So you see, like it's the same thing. It's the Fourier series that you have been uh, doing in calculus two. Okay, and also related to this, we can also define since they behave like a vector space, right? Vector space. What else can you do? You can calculate the inner product. So. Uh, inner product we can define the inner product between two functions okay so let's say I have um, well we start with the cat first right so I got two states uh, cat phi and cat psi and if I want to discuss functions, I look at the position representation. So I got psi x, right? And then I take this, and then I got phi x, okay? Then the inner product is supposed to be phi times psi, right? But I do this trick again where I insert the identity for no reason. And then suddenly, this one is actually the integral of. Uh, bra phi cat bra x and then psi here and here we realize that uh, this is the function phi x complex conjugate right is the complex conjugate here and then this is the psi of x okay so here we can find the inner product between uh, phi x and psi x so in that sense 
um, and related to Fourier series also. Uh, functions, right? The functions that we've been learning in calculus, so we just imagine that as graph. But here we can actually treat them like vectors. Like any function, we can sum them up to create a new function, right? That's linear combination, uh, basis vectors. And then we can multiply them, we can find the dot product between two functions, doing something like this. Okay, so given two functions, we can calculate the inner product using this uh, procedure. So that's pretty interesting, right? So this is why um, function is functions uh, belong to a vector space themselves. But function must uh, they must satisfy certain conditions, right? It, it's not all any literally any function. Okay. Okay. So with that, let's calculate some examples related to the square well. So let's come back to the square well um, issue for now. Uh, where's my lecture notes? Okay. Um, So we work out one example related to the uh, potential well. Okay. So it's example 3.2.1. Right. So what we have here is a particle of mass m confined to an infinite square well. Uh, and it is at the ground state n equals to 1. So uh, what is the probability of finding the particle in this region? So in the left half of the potential well. And what is the expectation value? So let's try to uh, calculate this. Okay. So example three point two point one. Uh, when n equals to one, right? It is 2 over a, yes, and then sine of n pi x over a. n equals to 1, so it's just pi x over a. Right, so this is the case where n equals to 1. Okay, so the first part is, um, uh, this one is like your probability and statistic question now. What is the probability of having the value between 0 to uh, a half? Right, so what you do is, well, you need to... Uh, I forgot what's it called in probability again. The probability density function, right? Uh, or distribution. Probability density function. It is, uh, but to get the PDF from your quantum wave function, uh, you need to do this. Okay, so you need to do this. And uh, and then to, to, deter to figure out this domain, you integrate from this domain, okay? So basically, you're integrating from 0 to a over 2 and the modulus square of this. But everybody here are real numbers. So modulus square is just 2 over a, straightforward, sine square, right? Pi x over a, no big deal. You get this, okay? And then, well, it's 2 over a. Uh, and then I, I need to integrate a sine function. So again, we use our trigger knowledge and convert this into half minus half cos of twice of this so 2 pi x over a integrate this with respect to dx so this is 2 over a integrate the first term you just is just a half x integrate this is uh, a over pi right no a over 4 pi yeah but even if it's wrong uh, it will not matter because this term is going to be 0 right so it's 2 pi x over a, yeah, it's 0 to a half, okay? So basically what you have here is a, um, 2 over a, and then if you put in the limits, the first term is just half a over 2, right? Half a over 2, and then uh, minus a over 4 pi is sine a over 2, you just get pi minus sine 0. So everybody is zero here, uh, and then this cancel, this cancel. So the probability is half. Okay. So by the picture I draw earlier, right? Uh, you can also already tell because just now the ground state, 
uh, wave function is it looks like this so the probability square is the square from 0 to a and then this part is a half so the area under the left side is half right so that is kind of obvious but at least uh, obviously it's consistent so you you know it's good to know that it makes sense to each other okay very easy right then what's next is I want to calculate the uh, expectation value of the position and momentum so how do I calculate the expectation value of X so expectation value of X is supposed uh, to be this right and I have shown you that uh, after some uh, derivation, this is equivalent to uh, doing the integration with respect to dx and then x times the probability density function square. Okay, so the full formula is integrating all possible x, but this function is 0 except for 0 to a, right? And then um, so I got the x here and then density function square is just 2 over a sine square pi x over a uh, integrate this with respect to uh, dx okay so um, oh yeah this is where we must be careful by instinct right I, I saw that this is a ev uh, even even function times odd function so I almost say the answer is 0 but it's not because my domain is 0 to a right so yeah so this is where we must be careful so this is uh, take out the 2 over a and then I will use my trigger identity here so integrate 0 to a uh, half minus half times the x here so I got x over 2 x over 2 cos 2 pi x over a integrate this with respect to dx and let us clean this up a little bit by taking cancelling the half right so and then integrate the first term so the first term is well if I integrate this it becomes a square over 2 right so this is 1 over a a square over 2 so this part will cancel and then minus uh, 1 over a and then integrating this so it's gonna be yeah let me write this out carefully first cos 2 pi x over a integrate this with respect to dx so this one you use integration by parts right so the first term is half and then this part is 1 over a um, let me just look at my notes uh, if you integrate by parts right um, well you integrate the first term so you got uh, You integrate the first term, so you got uh, a x over two pi, right? Sine two pi x over a, and then minus whatever you integrated is a over two pi, uh, sine two pi x over a, and then differentiate x, you get a one, and then you integrate from zero to a, right? So. Um, actually I don't need to be super careful here because it's gonna be 0 at the end of the day uh, it's ax over 2 pi uh, sine 2 pi x over a but it's a good habit to make sure you're always accurate right so this is a square over 4 pi square cos 2 pi x over a 0 to a right and then when you put in the limits it's just going to be 0 minus 0 plus, zero, uh, plus 1 minus 1 right so it's gonna be zero so the answer is in the middle so um, I think if you're good at statistics and probability you can also tell this is my probability density function so what is my most likely position expectation value expected value is gonna be at a half right so that is the um, that is my answer there okay okay any question is there anything? Scroll down. No. Uh. And recording. So, yeah. So, just finish one last thing. Uh, this is page 10, page 11. 
uh, what is the expectation value of momentum? So, um, for momentum, uh, remember that, uh, well, I want to calculate this thing, right? So this thing is supposed to be psi p psi. But in order to calculate p times psi, well, uh, it, you need to do this. So uh, remember that um, p operating on psi is p operating on the position representation, right? We are talking about uh, eigenstate one. So this is psi x integral x. And then if I operate the p inside, this means this is equal to h bar over i uh, derivative with respect to x, uh, the cat x, right? So what is differentiating this? Well, we know this already. Uh, firstly, h bar over i goes outside. Um, and then this is b sine of pi x over a, right? So the b is 2 over a square root. Okay. And then differentiating this is... Um, differentiating this you get a pi over a come out so differentiate becomes a cos right so cos pi x over a and then this thing so again a bit more a bit of tidying up uh, I got a uh, square root 2 over a pi over a h bar over i integral dx uh, cos pi x over a integrate this with respect to dx so I know the answer is going to be simple but i doing this to help us practice manipulating the bra cap right so the I need the bra as well so the bra of the state 1 is well it is the integral with respect to dx psi bar x and I will multiply this so I to distinguish to make sure they are different I will call this x prime right then the expectation value is just computing psi 1 uh, p psi 1 so you just need to take this multiply by this right oh I've, i yeah let me write this out first this is 2 over a root and then this is sine uh, and then pi x over a and then bra x prime x prime so this is actually bracket 2 over a square root integral dx prime uh, sine of pi x prime over a bra x and then p x is this whole chunk here so it's 2 over a pi over a h bar over i um, no space so I, I push it here right and then you multiply everything out so you multiply everything out what you have here is 2 over a uh, pi over a h bar over i integral with respect to dx prime integral with respect to dx as well and then uh, sine of pi x prime over a cos pi x over a and then bra x prime cat x so this one I have shown you before already right this is the Dirac delta function so if you perform the x prime integral so performing the x prime integral you just pick out the value of this function at x so this will replace this to x so what you have here is uh, 2 pi over a square uh, h bar over i so you integrate this is double integration right so you integrate one already you are left with one more integral here this one the x prime changed to x so you got pi x over a this one is cos pi x over a so then you just uh, integrate this function and if you integrate this function you're going to get zero so after all this mess actually it, it turns out to be zero but like I said I just want everyone to get used to understanding the notation here right so even if it's zero we know how to get the zero explicitly okay so yeah I think what time is it now yeah exactly on time so we finished the potential work exactly here so it's a good place to stop now and when we continue on Monday uh, we can we will do the we will continue to the next system that we want to solve which is the free particle okay so the free particle seems like an easy problem but there are some technical issues in terms of quantum mechanics that we need to take care of 
so yeah so that is for for next week so let's con uh, next monday so let's continue that on next monday be soft